Welcome to the Backyard Professor Responds. Elder David, Elder David Bednar of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints made a claim which truly by now the vast majority of us are no longer taken in by. But there is now actual really serious evidence that shows his claim is blatantly a misrepresentation of the truth. Let's take a look. That would be exactly the same today as it was anciently. So it's not a large corporation and the apostles are not the board of directors the savior knows people by name he knows their circumstances and he directs us in our work uh, we extend a particular welcome to those of you that are uh, participating and attending your first beneficial financial group event welcome to the beneficial financial group family uh, we would like to take a special moment to honor a number of special guests with us here this evening we extend a special welcome to President Gordon B. Hinckley, President of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and Chairman of Deseret Management Corporation, uh, our parent. President Thomas S. Monson, First Counselor in the First Presidency of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and a former board member of Beneficial Financial Group and his wife, Frances. President James E. Faust, Second Counselor in the First Presidency of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. President Boyd K. Packer, acting president of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles and a former chairman of Beneficial Financial Group. We excuse uh, President Packer's wife, Donna, who is visiting with family in the East. We also welcome other members of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles and their wives, members of the presiding bishopric and their wives. That would be exactly the same today as it was anciently. So it's not a large... So, the obvious question is to ask, why does the church fear so much in being a corporation? Because could it possibly threaten their tax-exempt status as a religion? Perhaps it could. But the simple idea that David Bednar knows the history of the modern church because he's been living in it and participating in it shows that he's hiding something. And what he's hiding is the fact that Mormonism isn't a church. Yes, the name, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, which today's current prophet, president, seer, revelator, translator, whatever you want to call him, leader, Russell M. Nelson, has said, quit calling it Mormonism because that's a victory for Satan. So Satan has been winning this war for 200 years, and now under the reign of Russell M. Nelson is finally beginning to give his opposition a few points by allowing us to say the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints because the current prophet thinks Jesus is very concerned about using his name instead of a nickname. And the other interesting thing that strikes me is we just recently learned within the last couple of years that the church, this magnificent corporation is well over the hundred billion dollar mark of money, which is simply dwarfing every other church and the vast majority of business corporations who pay taxes. But because it's using the name the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, allows it to keep its tax-exempt status. And it never, ever, ever would have ever told anyone at all how vastly filthy rich it is 
had it not been leaked out to the press. And then they had to scramble. Just like Elder Bednar is hiding his light under a bushel about the true nature of the church leadership being corporate executives rather than apostles, it seems to me like Jesus taught, ye cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon meaning wealth, money. But they're chasing mammon in great strides, and now they're lip-servicing Jesus. What did Jesus tell the rich young man to do in order to enter the kingdom of heaven? Not the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. Go and sell all that you have and give your money away. That's the only way. And the young man went away sorrowing. It doesn't seem to me like the church is following Jesus' injunction. Once you get to the $100 billion mark, and I'm not speaking from experience, fortunately, because I wouldn't want that much money, that would completely ruin your life if you had that much. We like to imagine it would make it. It would not. When you get to the $100 billion mark, you no longer give a damn about what is true and what is false. You're taking care of the money because you spent all that time and effort to make that astonishingly gigantic amount of money. Well, you're going to want to protect it and not lose it. So you try to make it grow. Your focus is going to be on the money, not Jesus, not God. I have that on pretty good authority if Jesus really did say that in the New Testament. So apparently the church doesn't take its own God very seriously when he said, oh no, you can't have both. You don't get to worship God and chase after mammon. You must do one or the other. Joseph Smith taught in the Doctrine and Covenants that the idea of consecration is that all men may become one with me if you are not one. And he meant it economically. It's why Joseph Smith began the bishop's storehouse. Not the piddly, lousy representative they call the bishop's storehouse today in order to hide their vast wealth from everybody else, but a real bishop storehouse where all people are equal financially and economically. There are no poor among you in Zion, but there's lots of poor people in the corporate, or I mean the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and there's a very, very simple way to alleviate that poverty. But they've admitted that they're saving their funds for a rainy day. They give $40 million a year away to charity, according to Dallin Oaks, which is less than 1% of 1% of their vast amount of wealth that they have. They have the power to create every quarter year between six and nine billion dollars. And I do believe I'm underestimating that. And they continue to accumulate and give away very, very precious little when their own master told them to give it all away, not just some. All of it, but they won't. And they're lying, which is so unfortunate. They're misleading, if I can do a more charitable comment. Give me any other choice based on the evidence you just saw in that clip about their wealth and what they really are. Is it any wonder... Truly, without question, is it any wonder that trust 
has been betrayed. And so very many people just simply no longer believe what they're taught, what they read, and what they're told, whether it's in firesides or rescue missions. If they aren't going to tell you the truth, then you can't have faith in them. But that's not the issue anyway. Yes, it is to them. They want you to follow them. But you're not saved through the church. Because it wasn't the church that was crucified for us. Now was it? But they don't want you to think that way. They want to put themselves between you and the Lord Jesus Christ as the only way to your salvation. 